no Stillwater fly box would be complete without a cross section of halfbacks. This simple Pacific Northwest favorite has been seducing trout for years. Tied in a variety of sizes, the halfback can represent everything from dragonfly nymphs to coronamid pupa. Consisting of two primary ingredients, peacock curl and pheasant tail, the halfback is a simple tie. So let's tie the hotspot halfback, a variation of the halfback nymph, a Pacific Northwest favorite that's great searching pattern and is a must in any still water fly box. Into the jaws of the vise, I've got a Daiichi 1560 uh, nymph hook, one extra long. Uh, you can tie these all the way up to a size 6, 8s, 10s, 12s, 14s. This is a suggestive pattern that depending on the size range can imitate everything from a dragonfly nymph, damselfly nymph, suggestive caddis pupa, calivatus nymph, Halfbacks work good when they're on scuds. It's just again a must pattern. So I'm now going to attach some 80 uh, MFC uh, hot orange tying thread. Secure that down on the shank. The original halfback would be would be tied with either a black or olive uh, tying thread. This is just going to give the fly a little bit of a orange head at the end of the fly. The tail is pheasant tail. So I'm just going to take a clump of uh, pheasant tail here and I'm going to stand it on edge and by doing so that aligns the tips probably eight to ten fibers is fine you don't have to count just for, just form a nice neat tail probably on the air on the side of sparse you know most nymphs don't have a three tails is common so about half the shank length or so is fine so I, you see I just cantered that a bit across the hook and allow the thread torque to roll that material up onto the shank and my tail is going to sit perfectly right on top and then we're just going to secure that nice and neat down the shank of the hook about three quarters mark and cut it off there and that'll set up a little proportional goal post so I know how far to form my body. Now halfbacks can be notoriously weak so we're going to make a dubbing loop out of wire some extra small UTC copper wire in this case so I've cut off a length and I'm just going to fold it and double it and just treat it like two strands of thread tie in both ends at least that's the theory. Make sure you get them both. I got them there. Both ends of the, the wire. Wind that back down to the base of the tail and back up to that three quarters point. And then we're going to take some peacock curl, four to five strands here. I sort of more or less align them by the tips. I'm going to trim off the very end of the tips because they're quite brittle. And then we're going to secure those along the top of the shank. Get them in. Help build up a little bit of an underbody. Come forward. I'm going to take some electrical pliers. I'm just going to grab the peacock curl. It's important to make sure that when, when I tied that wire, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but to make sure that your wire loop is a little bit longer than your uh, peacock curl. I'm just going to come in and now grasp both the loop and the hurl together. Clip them. I'll sort of bring this up. You can see I've clipped everything together here. And I'm just going to start spinning slowly. So I've got maybe six or eight turns of, of uh, um, twist put into the wire and the hurl. And then I'm going to just wrap this around the shank a couple of times. Then I'm going to stop. 
and now I'm going to twist it even tighter because the peacock curl is quite brittle and if you twist tightly right away we've got a few that are broken in there already but if you twist really tight right away they are going to break immediately so if you've got a few that break that's no big deal but we're just going to wind these forward and what you're doing is just reinforcing the heck out of your your peacock curl. And if one breaks like that one and then every once in a while you can just come in and give it a few extra twists and with each as you go progressively forward it's getting more and more durable because peacock curl is notoriously fragile but it works oh so well and we've just made a pretty bulletproof body or at least one that will last more than a few trout and we'll come up, we over wrap slightly tie off two wraps over top a couple in front to lock that down come with us our scissors and I'm going to use the backs of the blades there's wire in there trim that away and just bind that down you can see I've got a nice durable I've got one little tiny strand there adios gone so I've got a nice body there and now we're going to tie in our wing case and legs now the challenge whenever you you're you're tying in uh, a fly that uses both the same material tied in for the wing case and legs at least I found that it was always difficult to get your legs consistently the same length so I'll show you a trick for that so again I'm going to isolate a dozen or so fibers just sort of a gut feel of what looks right for the size of the fly. You're going to, obviously, a larger halfback would take more, smaller halfback would take less. But what we're going to do is bring our tying thread right up to the hook eye and form our legs first. So I like on my halfbacks legs that are about half the shank length long. Right? Not too long, but enough long enough to get a little bit of movement. Bind those in place on top. Right, so make sure they're positioned properly. And then secure the rest of the material down the shank and onto the body ever so slightly. It's called a halfback. You could joke one of part of Fly Fishing's football team. One little errant fiber there. So we'll go about halfway down. And now we're going to. The body is made up of the same material as a thorax. I don't really use dubbing loops for this part. We'll just take three strands of our peacock curl, trim off the brittle tips, tie them in by the trim tips, bring them up. Wind them up and form a nice thorax that's a little bit larger than the body. Tie off. And now we're going to form our legs. And depending on what you want to do, you can tie your legs out to the side or underneath. I'm going to tie them in kind of a semi swept back. So I'm going to come in and just sort of preen them and play with them and kind of divide them into two clumps like this and then I'm going to come in with my left thumb and forefinger and sweep and hold everything down back and slightly underneath and just wind the tying thread back and there I've got my legs where I want them I can fan them around massage them around but you've got your legs formed like so perfectly just like that you just have to divide them so you can clear a path you can sweep them down and underneath and that's all left to do now is to pull our wing case material over make sure that's tied off good and secure pull up on the remnants build up a nice little orange hot spot head Again, you could tie these with black thread, olive thread, chartreuse thread, red thread. It's just a little stand out in the crowd on here. Little hot spots are good. Whip finish. 
done. Again, I always like to see any of my videos, you know, I like to preen and play. Get those up and then we're going to put a little bit of protective coating on that thread head in the form of the Solera's bone dry. Let that sit, that really shines it up, gives it a look of elegance to a classic still water pattern and then we're just going to cook it and that may not show on camera but man that fluorescent orange head just pops so it deeper murkier water this fly could be the ticket to standing out so there you have it the hot spot halfback a variation of the original halfback pattern it is a must for any still water fly box be sure to add this or the original version to your still water fly box for more information on fly fishing and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online still water fly fishing store. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. While you're visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.